right. Okay. Um, well, this is our last week. And I've got, uh, I'm prepared to, to sum all this up. And, uh, but before I start with the final bits of study, I want to, I want to share something from the New Testament and the New Testament era about this truth that I don't think I've shared, uh, I've shared yet. So you'll bear with me. You all should be able to see this. Okay, can y'all see the screen? So this is a person, a Roman. I don't see it. I don't see it. I did. Uh -oh. I did, but now I only see a white line down the middle of the page. Hold on. Right. How right. about now? Yes, we see it. Yeah. Awesome. Yes. Okay. Tacitus uh, is a Roman, uh, and he he uh, was a I believe he was a writer, a historian, writer, a historian. And I just want to read a portion of what Tacitus has written on the Jews. Uh, it's in the highlighted area here. <clears throat> I'll start at a few, I'll start a little higher. A few authorities hold that in the reign of Isis, the surplus population of Egypt was evacuated to neighboring lands under the leadership of Hierosalimus and Judas. Many assure us that the Jews are descended from those Ethiopians who were driven by fear and hatred to emigrate from their home country when Cephas was king. So here, uh, to see Tacitus says that the Jews were descendants from those Ethiopians who were driven by fear and hatred, right? Uh, the only reason why he says this is because of their complexion, right? There are those, I'm sorry, there are some, excuse me, who say that a motley collection of landless Assyrians occupied a part of Egypt and, and then built cities of their own, inhabiting the land of the Hebrews and nearer parts of Syria. Others again find a famous ancestry for the Jews in the uh, Salami, who are mentioned with respect in the epics of Homer. This tribe is supposed have found, have found it, excuse me, Jerusalem and named it after themselves. So Tacitus, a New Testament era historian, writes concerning the, the Jews that they are descendants from Ethiopians. Now we know that they are not descendants from Ethiopians. Ethiopian was the Greek uh, term for Kush and uh, the Jews are not Kushites but rather Shemites. But the point that I think, the bigger point that we can take away from what Tacitus has written is that they share a complexion very much like the Ethiopians, Kushites. All right, let me show you one more thing. Uh, All right, uh, and share. Oop, wrong thing. Let's try this again. Share that. All right. Um, <clears throat> I think it's verse 20, uh, 38. All right. So in Acts 21, 38, uh, Paul is in Roman custody because of uh, because of the Jews, <laughs> and uh, and while he is being uh, taken to the hold, Paul starts speaking to the guard. Verse thirty seven says, and as Paul was to be led into the castle, he said unto the chief captain, "May I speak unto thee?" Who said, "Canst thou speak Greek?" Art not thou that Egyptian which before these days made us an uproar and led us out into the wilderness 4,000 men that were murderers? You see that? This Roman 
mistook Paul for an Egyptian. Mm. Art not thou that Egyptian? And I know that we've gone over this time and again, but the only way that Paul could have been mistook for an Egyptian is if he shared the same complexion as the Hamites. Okay. Okay, so I just wanted to share uh, that with you. Just a couple things from the New Testament era. Um, concerning the complexion of Hebrews. All right, all right. And so now I'm going to get into the study. So now what? We've gone through all of this material. And so what is it, what does it all mean? And so I'm just gonna go through this document. You guys can read along with me. In the previous articles, we've shown how Ham was the father of the dark races. If you'll remember, uh, that's a direct quote from, uh, from Zondervan Bible Dictionary, where they said that Ham was the progenitor of the dark races, not the Negroes. His children, Cush, Mizram, Foot, and Canaan, are listed as nations in Genesis 10. These names correspond with Ethiopia, Egypt, Libya, and the land of Canaan, or what is now Israel. All these nations reside on the African tectonic plate and extends into Asia. Again, this is the geotectonic map showing Africa, the African plate continuing into Asia and the Arabian plate continuing along the Persian Gulf. We show how Ham, Shem, and their descendants share the same physical appearance. In fact, everyone in the region shares similar physical appearance. Consider the following. According to Genesis, humanity only spread out over the earth after the flood. Before this, the nine generations after Adam lived in Eden. The area the garden was located. After the first couple were expelled from the garden, they lived in this area. The book of Jasher was written by a Jewish rabbi in the medieval period and purports to be the ancient book of Jasher referred to in the Old Testament. It claims that in the days before Noah, God sent the flood to the antediluvian people to warn them of their wicked ways. Jasher 2.6, and the Lord caused the waters of the river Gihon to overwhelm them, and he destroyed and consumed them, and he destroyed the third part of the earth and notwithstanding this, the sons of men did not turn from their evil ways. Their hands were yet extended to do evil in the sight of the Lord. The Gihon, as stated in Genesis, was the river that compasseth the whole land of Ethiopia, as we've discussed before. The word earth in Hebrew is Eretz. It can mean the whole earth, ground, region, or inhabitants. The only way a third of the inhabitants of the earth could have been killed by Gihon flooding is if all of humanity was imagined to have lived by that river. If they meant a third of the region of Eden, then it must have been located in the neighborhood of Cush. Either way, it makes all biblical figures from Adam to Noah East Africans. All right. The Shemites. Noah's children... Ham, Shem, and Japheth were East Africans. The descendants of Shem moved to West Asia, while the descendants of Japheth moved to the vast region of Eurasia. In Eurasia, the black Japhethites turned white. This probably happened by giving birth to white babies with straight hair, as in the picture below. These babies were not albinos, although it is rare this still happens among sub-Saharan Africans to this day. The picture is of a Nigerian family with a white baby who has straight blonde hair. The Shemites became the, uh, became the Aboriginal West Asians like the Elamites and Black Syrians. Nimrod, the son of Cush, followed the Shemites to West Asia and set up camp in Southern Mesopotamia. See the Black Summer Trilogy. Later, the Japhethites moved from Eurasia to this region. This led to a gradual whitening of the West Asians during antiquity. See Unmistakably Black, sculptures and paintings from the world's first civilizations, by a new Mbantu, Pomegranate Publishing, 2013. 
Here is a black Elamite Persian and a white Japhetic Persian. Here is a Mara man with complexion contrasting the white costume he's wearing. I don't know how many of you have seen the movie 300, um, Gerard Butler. Uh, Russell Crowe. Uh, no, Russell Crowe wasn't in 300. 300 was the folks from, uh, anyway, in the movie, there were a group of folks that were called the Immortals that had wore masks on their face and they were supposed to be the most deadly fighters the world has ever seen. Well, <clears throat> Freeze of the Royal Guards of Darius I from 522 to 486 BC called the 10,000 Immortals. Look at their complexion. Look at their hair. From the Ishtar Gate, the Eighth Gate to the inner city of Babylon. Okay. From Shem also came Eber, the father of Joktan. The latter was the father of the Aboriginal people of Arabia who can still be found in parts of Central, Southern, and Eastern Arabia, speaking South Semitic languages like Mahri and Shahari. They are of obvious Black descent today, as, seen, uh, as seems evident from their pictures, uh, with hair resembling that of first Australians. This strongly suggests Jockton, Eber, and Shem were supposed to be Black in the mind of the original authors of Genesis. Abraham was descended from Sham and Eber, which strongly suggests that he too was black, according to the story. His grandson Jacob used stones for pillows, suggesting that his hair was thick and afro enough to form a comfortable cushion between his scalp and the rocks. Jacob's son Joseph was mistaken for an Egyptian by the rest of Jacob's family after being sold into slavery in his youth. Jacob's uh, distant descendant was Moses, who was also mistaken for an Egyptian in Midian. Moses had his hand turn white as part of an impressive miracle, turning type six skin into type one skin would be the most impressive miracle. In other words, turning it from dark complexion to white complexion. This strongly suggests that Moses had a complexion like Naomi Camel's. See the ancient black Hebrews volume one. The logic of the Hebrew Levitical laws exclude types one through four from the general complexion range. We talked about that a bit last week. Uh, okay. The Nazarites were described as red like earth, clearly a dark red, which came to approximate a coal black as a result of famine. Uh, speaking of that, we know that David the scripture says was ready, right? And the pictures that I've seen growing up, uh, looking at uh, looking at my mom and dad's Bible with pictures in it, was a picture of a rosy-cheeked boy uh, because of that word, ruddy. But ruddy does not does not characterize uh, what is commonly referred to as white skin. Uh, this is a clear, this is clearly a case of starvation. In other words, ruddy is like red, like the earth, a dark red. <clears throat> anyway, I'll read that again. The Nazarites were described as red, like earth, clearly a dark red, which came to approximate a coal black as a result of famine. This is clearly the case of starvation induced hyperpigment uh, pigmentation. Skin types five and six are more susceptible to this condition and only type six could produce a complexion that approximates coal. Other Old Testament figures like Job also complain of disease-induced hyperpigmentation. David and Solomon were described as the same red-like earth as the Nazarites. All of this tells us that the ancient Hebrews of the Old Testament were a black people like other Aboriginal peoples of West Asia. It gives credibility to the many paintings of Black Christ and Madonna that can be found in the oldest churches of Europe and Asia Minor. It also places in context some of the images found in early medieval synagogues in West Asia and Europe. When we consider the geographical context of Israel in relation to Africa and Europe, there is nothing surprising about this. 
uh, from Gert Mueller's The Ancient Black Hebrews, Volume 2, The Forensic Proof, Simply Explain. All right, so now what? If we are the chosen, the children of Israel, the people of God, why are we in these terrible conditions? Why are we treated like animals and in fear every time we leave our homes? Why does the Almighty treat us this way, and what can we do to change it? In light of this evidence, what does the Most High require of us? We need to understand that our ancestors and we ourselves have not walked in the ways of the Almighty. We have not obeyed the commandments of Adonai Elohim, the Lord God. And before I start reading these, and all these references, reference scriptures are going to be from the Old Testament. But I need you to understand that the reason why uh, the Old Testament is referred to so often here is because the Old Testament is where God is dealing directly with the Hebrews. In the New Testament, God is dealing with the church. Unfortunately, the Hebrew people, because Jesus came to them first, he told the woman at the well that salvation is of the Jews. But the Jews rejected Christ. That is, our forefathers rejected Christ. As a result, the scripture says in the 21st, I believe, chapter of Matthew, that God is going to take the kingdom from the nation of Israel and give it to another nation that will render him the fruits in, the, in their season. And that was the, the introduction to the times of the Gentiles. The Gentiles are largely responsible for the propagation of the gospel around the earth, not the Jews. We need to understand that our ancestors and we ourselves have not walked in the ways of the Almighty. In Leviticus 26, it reads, but if ye will not hearken unto me and will not do all these commandments, and if ye shall despise my statutes, or if your soul abhor my judgments, so that you will not do all of my commandments, but that you break my covenant, I also will do this unto you. I will even appoint over you terror, consumption, and the burning ague that shall consume the eyes and shall cause sorrow of heart, and ye shall sow your seed in vain, and your enemies shall eat it, and I says God, will set my face against you and you shall be slain before your enemies that they, they that hate you shall reign over you and you shall flee when none pursueth you. Mm -hmm. 26, 14 through 17. Because we have lived in disobedience to the instructions and commandments of the Most High and since we despise the Almighty's laws and judgments, we are suffering the consequences of our disobedience. We are suffering the consequences of our disobedience. We are suffering because our fathers provided a pattern of disobedience and we are following in their footsteps. For that, the Most High has said he would levy certain punishments and curses against us. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Deuteronomy 28, 15. The Lord shall cause the pestilence to cleave unto thee until he have consumed thee from off the land whither thou goest to possess it. The Lord shall smite thee with a consumption and with a fever and with an inflammation and with an extreme burning and with the sword and with blasting and with mildew and they shall pursue thee until thou perish. Then the Lord will make thy plagues wonderful and the plagues of thy seed, even great plagues and of long continuance and sore sickness and of long continuance. I also will do this I will do this unto you. I will even appoint over you terror, consumption, and the burning ague that shall consume the eyes and cause sorrow of heart. And you shall sow your seed in vain, for your enemies shall eat it. And I will set my face against you, and you shall be slain before your enemies. They that hate you shall reign over you, and you shall flee when none pursueth. Again, Deuteronomy 28, uh, 21, 22, and 58. 
Leviticus 26, verses 16 and 17. The Lord shall send upon thee cursings, vexation, and rebuke, and all that thou settest thine hand unto, uh, hand unto for to do, until thou be destroyed, and until thou perish quickly, because of the wickedness of thy doings, whereby thou hast forsaken me, Deuteronomy 28, 20. And if you walk contrary unto me and will not hearken unto me, I will bring seven times more plagues upon you according to your sins, Leviticus 26, 21. The Lord shall cause thee to be smitten before thy enemies. Thou shalt go out one way against them and flee seven ways before them and shalt be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth. Deuteronomy 28, 25. And if thou, excuse me, if you will not be reformed by me, by these things, but will walk contrary unto me, then will I also walk contrary unto you and will punish you seven times for your sins. Leviticus 26, 23, and 24. And I will bring a sword upon you that shall avenge the quarrel of my covenant. And when you are gathered together in, within your cities, I will send the pestilence among you, and you shall be delivered into the hand of the enemy. And if you will not for all this hearken unto me, but walk contrary unto me, then I will walk contrary unto you also in fury. And I, even I, will chastise you seven times for your sins. If you don't think you're being chastised, just keep looking at these images. Thou shalt betroth a wife, and another man shall lie with her. Thou shalt build a house, and thou shalt not dwell therein. Thou shalt plant a vineyard, and shalt not gather the grapes. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. Thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long, and there shall be no might in thine hand. The fruit of thy land and all thy labors shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up, and thou shalt be only oppressed and crushed all way. The Lord shall bring thee and thy king which thou shalt set over thee unto a nation which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, and there shalt thou serve other gods, wood and stone. You see, we had a proclivity to serving other gods. Idolatry seemed to be part of our, uh, our leaning. We just... Every time God would show himself mighty, the pillar of cloud, uh, the cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night, manna falling out of heaven, the Red Sea parting. And all, for all of that, we continue to follow after and chase after other gods. Well, uh, he said that he was going to make us a proverb and a byword. Don't let these pictures fool you. These are actual pictures that were used to describe us. <laughs> The not so distant past. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all nations, whither the Lord shall lead thee. B is for black, right? The opposite of white, dirty, messy, without light, dark, illegal, dim, smuggled, sombre, disastrous, dismal, obscure, sullen, bad-tempered, angry, horrible, grotesque, malignant, unlucky, unhappy, depressed, a proverb and a byword. Mm -hmm. You see the pictures? Yeah. God's not done. Thou shalt begut sons and daughters, but thou shalt not enjoy them, for they shall go into captivity. Deuteronomy 28, 30, 32, 33, 36, 37, and 41. And upon them that are left alive of you, I will send a faintness into their hearts, Faintness into their hearts. <laughs> Bastard. Uh, uh, I don't know if this happens to you. But it doesn't matter how much I am obeying the speed limit. How much I am obeying the laws of the land. Every time a police officer gets behind me just for a second. Just I have a little twinge. Just for a second. That passes away. But just for a second, it's there. The scripture says he's going to send faintness into their hearts in the land of their enemies. And the sound of a shaken leaf shall chase them and they shall flee 
as fling from a sword, and they shall fall when none pursueth. All oh, looking over your back, huh? What was that? And they shall fall one upon another, as it were before sword, when none pursueth, and you shall have no power to stand before your enemies. And you shall perish among the heathen, and the land of your enemies shall eat you up. And they that are left of you shall pine away in their iniquity <clears throat> in your enemies' lands, and also in the iniquity of their fathers shall they pine away with them. And you shall be few in number, whereas you were as the stars of heaven for multitude, because thou wouldest not obey the voice of the Lord thy God. And among these nations shalt thou find no ease. Neither shall the sole of thy foot have rest. But the Lord shall give thee there a trembling heart and failing of eyes, a sorrow of mind. And thy life shall hang in doubt before thee. Thou shalt fear day and night and shalt have none assurance of thy life. Leviticus 26, 36 through 39, Deuteronomy 28, 62, 65, and 66. Thy carcass shall be meat unto all fowls of the air and unto the beasts of the earth, and no man shall fray them away. And thou shalt grope at, at noonday as the blind gropeth in the darkness, and thou shalt not prosper in thy ways. And thou shalt be only oppressed and spoiled evermore, and no man shall save thee. Deuteronomy 28, 26, and 29. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee and overtake thee till thou be destroyed, because thou hearkens not unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments and statutes which he commanded thee. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder and upon thy seed forever, because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with the gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. Deuteronomy 28, 45 through 47. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. Deuteronomy 28, 48. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flying, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand, a nation of fierce countenance, which shall not regard the person of the old, nor show favor to the young. If thou wilt not observe to do the words of this law that are written in this book, that thou mayest fear this glorious and fearful name, the Lord thy God. Deuteronomy 28. 49, 50, and 58. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from one end of the earth, even to the other. And there shalt thou serve other gods, which neither thy fathers nor, uh, uh, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. Deuteronomy 28, 64. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships by the way, Whereof I speak unto thee. I want to give just a little clarity on this passage. It says he shall bring you to Egypt again with ships. Now, number one, Egypt is connected a, to Israel. There was no way to get to Egypt. There was no, there was no, no way, no need to get to Egypt by ship. However, the word Egypt means house of bondage. And the Lord said he will bring thee into Egypt again with ships. So we were carried away to the house of bondage. That's why you have this image of the back of a dollar bill. By the way, whereof I spake unto thee. Sorry. 
uh, thou shalt see it no more again. And there shall ye be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen, and no man shall buy you. That word buy is uh, the word, uh, the word uh, there is used redeem. No man shall redeem you. Deuteronomy 28, 67. So, uh, so what's the remedy? In the New Testament era, we are made new. Jesus Christ paid for our sins, past, present, and future. It's covered under the blood. Okay. But I want you to understand this one thing. God is not dealing with the Hebrews. The Hebrews are going to have to give an account for what they have done. We're going to read some of that. So the remedy is we need to repent. If they shall confess their iniquity and the iniquity of their fathers with their trespass, which they trespass against me, and that also that they have walked contrary unto me, and that I also have walked contrary unto them, and have brought them into the land of their enemies, if then their uncircumcised hearts be humbled, and they then accept the punishment of their iniquity, then will I remember my covenant with Jacob, and also my covenant with Isaac, and also my covenant with Abraham will I remember, and I will remember the land. The land also shall be left of them and shall enjoy her Sabbath while she lieth desolate without them. And they shall accept the punishment of their iniquity because even because they despise my judgments and because their soul abhorred my statutes. And yet for all that, when they be in the land of their enemies, I will not cast them away. Neither will I abhor them to destroy them utterly and to break my covenant with them. Hallelujah. <laughs> so even though we're going through all of this, the Lord still says he is not going to forget us. For I am the Lord their God. But I will, for their sakes, remember the covenant of their ancestors, whom I brought forth out of the land of Egypt and the sight of the heathen, that I might be their God. I am the Lord. Leviticus 26, 40, 41, 44, and 45. The Most High requires us to humble ourselves, to seek his face, to acknowledge the sins of our ancestors. Then and only then will he turn away his wrath. Let me give you an example of that. Uh, this, is, this is Daniel chapter 9, uh, verses 3 through 19. You're free to read along in your Bible. I'm going to read all these passages. Daniel is coming. He, he, he understood that he was coming to the end of their captivity in Babylon. Daniel began to set his face to, toward the Lord to begin making prayer and supplications. We're going to read that. Uh, but not just for him and his immediate friends, but also for his ancestors, his forefathers. This is where we get the understanding of Daniel, of the 21 uh, Daniel fast, the 21 day fast is from here. It reads, and I set my face unto the Lord God to seek by prayer and supplication with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. And I prayed unto the Lord, my God. And made my confession and said, O Lord, the great and dreadful God, keeping the covenant and mercy to them that love him and to them that keep his commandments, we have sinned and have committed iniquity and have done wickedly and have rebelled even by departing from thy precepts and from thy judgments. Neither have we hearkened unto thy servants, the prophets, which spake in thy name to our kings, our princes, and our fathers, to, and to all the people of the land. O Lord, righteousness belongs unto thee, but unto us confusion of faces as at this day. To the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and unto all Israel that are near and, the, and that are far off through all the countries 
whether thou hast driven them because of their trespass and that they have trespassed against thee. Now, at this point in time, the uh, Hebrews had only been scattered into two places, Babylon and Assyria, only those two. So you can see in this prayer that he is speaking prophetically all the countries which the Lord has driven them because of the trespass. O Lord, to us belongs confusion of face to our kings, to our princes, and to our fathers, because we have sinned against thee. To the Lord our God belong mercies and forgiveness, though we have rebelled against him, neither have we obeyed the voice of the voice of the Lord our God, to walk in his laws which he set before us by his servants the prophets. Yea, all Israel have transgressed thy law, even by departing, that they might not obey thy voice. Therefore, the curse is poured upon us, and the oath that is written in the law of Moses that we just read in Deuteronomy and Leviticus, the servant of God, because we have sinned against him. And he hath confirmed his word, uh, his words which he spake against us and against our judges that judged us by bringing upon us a great evil. For the whole heaven hath not been, for under the whole heaven hath not been done as hath been done upon Jerusalem. As it is written in the law of Moses, all this evil has come upon us. Yet may we not our prayer before the Lord our God, that we might turn from our iniquities and understand thy truth. Therefore hath the Lord watched upon the evil and brought it upon us. For the Lord our God is righteous and all his works which he doeth, for we obey not his voice. And now, O Lord our God, that has brought thy people forth out of the land of Egypt with a mighty hand and has gotten thee renowned at, as at this day. We have sinned and have done wickedly. O Lord, according to all thy righteousness, I beseech thee, let thine anger and thy fury be turned away from thy city, Jerusalem, thy holy mountain, because for our sins and for the iniquities of our fathers, Jerusalem and thy people are become a reproach to all that are about us. Now, therefore, O our God, hear the prayer of thy servant, and his supplication, and cause thy face to shine upon thy sanctuary that is desolate for the Lord's and the city which is called by thy name. Uh, yeah, and our desolation. Excuse me, read that again. Now, therefore, O our God, hear the prayer of thy servant and his supplications, and cause thy face to shine upon thy sanctuary that is desolate for the Lord's sake. O oh my God, incline thine ear and hear. Open thine eyes and behold our desolations and the city which is called by thy name. For we do not present our supplications before thee for our righteousness, but for thy great mercies. O oh Lord, hear. O oh Lord, forgive. O oh Lord, hearken and do. Defer not for thine own sake. O oh my God, for thy city and thy people are called by thy name. Daniel 9, 3 through 19. We have a responsibility to not, yes, Christ paid it all, but I'm telling you, God is going to deal with Hebrew people in the last days. Hebrew people, by and large, I, I love the brother Dante Fortson, several other brothers uh, who, who I love dearly uh, because of the work that they're doing, but they are, they are doing damage to the work of Christ. They are disparaging the faith of Christianity and uplifting and upholding and exalting uh, Hebrewism. God hasn't called us to do that, but God has called Hebrews to repent, not for ourselves only, but for the iniquity of our fathers. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth, and all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Deuteronomy 28, 1 and 2. And for us in the New Testament era, our king is Jesus. Everything that he commands us to do, we should be doing that. Jesus is our king, okay? 
We're not trying to return back to some sort of Old Testament uh, mosaic law. That's not the point by reading these verses. But the point is, is that God is going to deal with us for our sin. Amen. 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 Yeah. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt diligently, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto my commandments, which I command you this day to love the Lord your God and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. Deuteronomy 11, 13. Only if thou carefully hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to, do, to observe, to do all these commandments which I command thee this day. Deuteronomy 15, 5. If my people, we love this, per, this verse in the church. We love this verse in the church. Yes. This verse is for Hebrews. Yes, the church can have application to this. This verse is for Hebrews. He says, if my people, yes. which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then. You see, you can't get what comes after then until you do what was before then. Okay. Humble ourselves, pray and seek his face. And then Daniel gave us a framework for what prayer looks like. God, we have sinned. Me, my daddy, my grandpa, his grandpa, we've all sinned. We've sinned. This is the reason why the George Floyds and the other folks, the Rosa Parks, the whole, the whole Jim Crow era, this is the reason, we are the reason why this happened. Come on, man. Us. <laughs> yes, sir. Me. The reason, you. The reason why this is happening. The reason why we get pulled over for DWB, driving while black. The reason why we get just these insane things happen to us. Hey, did you know this? Did you know that 25% of the world's population is incarcerated in the United States of America? Did you know that 95% of those folks incarcerated are black and brown people? You didn't know that, did you? <laughs> he says, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then the Lord says, I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and will heal their land. Now, Lewis, if we all don't do that, what's going to happen? Is that required by everybody to do that? Or it's God's going to consider those who do uh, in some kind of way, whether the others don't or not. It is required by everyone who knows they need to do it. Okay. So if you know you need to do it, then you should be doing that. This should be a regular, continual prayer. Because guess what? We're still in bondage. Let me give you an example of what bondage looks like. See, we got this, we got this idea of what bondage means, chains, and yes, chains can be involved, but let me show you something here. Give me just a second to find it. Um, it's not there. And it has to be. Okay. So. Okay, I'm not thinking of the words, but the gist of what I'm looking for, I think it's in Jeremiah. Uh, the prophet told the people, hey, listen, when they're about their captivity in the Babylon, hey, build houses, plant vineyards, raise a family. You're going to be here for a minute. Guess what? They were in captivity. The same thing was given to them, uh, was given to them when they were in captivity in Assyria. Yeah, plant vineyards and build houses, raise a family. You're gonna be here for a while. Guess where they were? They were in captivity. 
guess where you are? You're in captivity. So we have a responsibility to, to be a blessing to the folks, to our captors, to our enemies. Uh, God has not called us. God has called us to love our enemies. He said that, uh, that if, you know, if your enemy you know, uh, ask you for your, 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 your coat, give him your cloak also. That's, I don't know. He said, turn the other cheek. That's what he said. This is how we're going to demonstrate who we are in Christ in the land of our captivity. The situation that we're in is not going to change until we do. Yes, Jesus paid it all. Christ is our Lord and Savior. Yes, 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 yes. Jesus is our King. Jesus is our Lord. Yes, yes, yes. But the reality is God is going to continue to deal with his people. If you read the rest of Daniel 9, uh, in fact, just the whole book of Daniel, you'll see where God is making reference to future times where he's going to be dealing with Hebrews. God is not done with us yet. He's not done. What we need to be doing is preparing for what's coming in the future. As much as we can, where it makes sense, let's have uh, conversations. I'm talking to my family about this, my uh, sisters and brothers and uh, my children. I've already <laughs> pretty much indoctrinated them into a lot of this. They don't all understand it or believe it even, but still tell them, tell that grandbaby who she is. Raise her with the knowledge of who she is, right? We have a responsibility to our people for Jesus' sake. All right, it's 8.03, and I am done with, with the lesson, as it were. Mm. Mm -hmm. Bro, let me tell you something. As you were... Uh... Preaching. As you were, as you was preaching your sermon. Yes. And I'm going to tell you this. Um, so much emotion. Yes. It's hard not to. Stirred within me. Hmm. So much sorrow. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And uh, I just the undeniable truth. And, and I say, and I want to say this to you, Lewis, if this it, preaching is you, it, it is a court. Every Sunday I stand before a jury. Yeah. And we attempt as pre preachers to present our case. And then we lay out our clothes and argue. <laughs> Amen. You laid out, your closing argument. Yes, I agree. Meticulously. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. And I want to say that if I was on that jury, mm -hmm. okay, you'd have, have my vote. <laughs> so, I mean, right. um, I, I mean, man, so much emotion. Does anybody else feel the same? I mean, I, I, yeah. I was yes. asking. He was going through laying out the, the chronological detail. detail. Yeah. Anybody yeah. else feel the same? Can I can I hear yeah. from anybody? Can I hear from some other folk? I could hear the emotion even in Lewis because even he got uh, very mm -hmm. emotional as he was presenting it. But it was yeah. mm -hmm. there. Um, so I can tell you for me, I, I texted Calandria. I'm like, wow. Like my mouth is open, uh, but I'm a very visual person. And so with the visuals along with um, his presentation, it makes it real. And yes. you're like, wow, like, like this is recent. You know, this is not, this is recent. What's and going on? I, I'm, my mouth is open. Yeah. And I love how at the, at you, the, uh, conclusion you laid out the posture of the Christ of, of us as Christians really how we should posture ourselves at that it's it's uh 
foolishness to try to engraft ourselves into an, a, a Hebraic system and uh, because we are Christians, we are right? Christians. We are Christians. And I think that is so important. That is probably um, one of the most important messages here. But the, the way you laid out this truth, Lewis, I, man, I'm, I'm, I'm really tripping. Does anybody else wonder how, how is it that this conversation got lost? Yeah. I mean, hmm. um, and I'll say this, I don't know that I've heard the chronological order or, or, have, or had it laid out as succinctly as you did tonight, man. I think that was very special. And, and if y'all on this, on this zoom, man, this was a special, this was a special moment. Um, anyway, I mean, let me be quiet, but, um, Jerry, what do you think, man, about all this? I'm kind of in another, uh, another place right now. I'm listening with one ear and checking messages with the other. Yes, sir. Okay. Because what's going okay. on in San Antonio, it's, it's very, um, it's, it's a wealth of information and I missed a couple of sessions, so I'm going to have to back up and walk through some things. Um, it's, it's very illuminating to me to say the least. That's, that's, that's the best word I can use right now. Mm. Very instructive. Mm. Can I, can I share something else? Another passage of scripture? Um, I'm going to be reading from Matthew 21, starting in verse 20, 33. I'll tell you beforehand, I get choked up when I read this, so I'll try to do it without uh, any water words. Here, another parable. There was a certain householder which planted a vineyard and hedged it, up, hedged it round about and digged a wine press in it and built a tower and let it out to husbandmen and went into a far country. And when the time of the fruit drew near, he sent his servants to the husbandmen that they might receive the fruits of it. And the husbandman took his servants and beat one and killed another and stoned another. Again, he sent other servants more than the first and they did unto them likewise. But, at, but last of all, he sent unto them his son, saying, they will reverence my son. Hmm. But when the husbandmen saw the son, they said among themselves, this is the heir. Come, let us kill him and let us seize his inheritance. They caught him, cast him out of the vineyard, and slew him. I want to go back and help un with some understanding of what we've read so far. The certain householder is the most high, God the Father, which planted a vineyard, hezed it round about, digged a wine press, built a tower, and let it out to husbandmen. The, the vineyard was Israel. The husbandmen were the, uh, were the leaders of Israel. And he went back into a far country. When the time of the fruit drew near, he sent his servants, that is the prophets, to these husbandmen, the leaders of Israel, that they might receive the fruits of it. And the husbandmen, that is these leaders, took his servants, that is the prophets, beat one and killed another and stoned another. So now that we have an idea of what's going on, in verse 40, we know who the son is, that was Christ. Verse 40, when the Lord therefore of the vineyard cometh, what will he do unto those husbandmen? This is what the current leadership in Israel said. He will miserably destroy those wicked men and let out his vineyard unto other husbandmen, which shall render him the fruits in their season. Jesus said unto them, did you ever read in the scripture, the stone which the builders rejected, the same has become the head of the corner. This is the Lord's doing and it's marvelous in our eyes. Therefore, I say unto you, Israel, 
unto you, Hebrews. This is what I'm saying unto you. The kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. And whosoever shall fall on the stone shall be broken, but on whomsoever it shall fall, it will grind him to powder. Our forefathers, <laughs> our forefathers, <laughs> See, they knew this was about them. They knew that he was talking about them. And they still turned him into the Romans. They still rejected him. But our forefathers said, he will miserably destroy them. And I submit unto you that what we're experiencing in life today is miserable destruction. Because of what our fathers did. Because they rejected the Lord. What are we going to do about that? What are you going to do about that? Yeah. Anyway, it's about a quarter after. Any other comments? That's why, that's why, the, script, that's why the scriptures say we must work out our own soul salvation with fear and trembling. So we have to be about his business. Otherwise, we don't have a chance. I'm going to tell you the stakes are much higher than we realize. The time is much closer than we realize. And it's really time out for playing. Amen. If you've been playing mm -hmm. church this whole time, not you guys on the class. I know y'all are the real. <laughs> but for the folks who are watching this video, if you've been playing with Jesus, you better quit playing. That's right. It's time out for playing. Gotcha. We're a, a lot closer than you realize. Okay. Much closer. The stakes are much higher. They're, I heard an old preacher say, I may have told you guys this before. Old preacher was like talking to this guy. Hey, what you doing? He says, oh, I'm just killing time. He said, yeah. He said, yep, I'm just killing time. Preacher said, you can't kill time without injuring eternity. Mm. Wow. You better quit playing. Can't play. You better quit playing. Yes. God ain't playing. And he's coming back soon. Mm. Real soon. Mm -hmm. All right, y'all. All right. So, um, Lewis, over the next, uh, where are we? July, going into July. So, over the next several weeks, is going to kind of edit a lot of this stuff, y'all. Um, and if you have any ideas or create creative ideas on ways to package this, edit this, um, feel free to submit those ideas to Lewis. Uh, one of the things that I was thinking about, Lewis, um, that I, I, I kind of see that I think would be almost uh, joltingly impactful is that summary that you gave us on tonight. Yeah. And I don't know exactly how to do this. So maybe someone knows how to do this. But um, we've all seen on maybe one of the award shows or, or a, a news show to where we're reading the same script. So I'm, I'm reading something. And then it goes to um, uh, yeah, Somebody it goes else. to John Legend reading a little bit of it, and then Samuel Jackson he's reading, and it goes to and it goes to another, and then it all these people are reading from the same script, and and it goes to different people reading this, and in my mind, I would love for us to capture on video that closing uh, argument and for for you to get participants 
from from your um, lecture series uh, group, everybody to read through that whole deal captured on video. And I'd love to also get some youth, um, you know, maybe Brandon, uh, Shatara's son, Matthew. Um, I'm thinking even younger. And think of the impact. Think of the impact. If we can get some young folks that really know how to articulate themselves, I'm talking about elementary age that that can, you know, that can really articulate that and read through that document. Think about how impactful that is. And if you can go through and isolate that and piece it together. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Does that make any sense, anybody? Does y'all see what, what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. My visual people, uh, my creative people, do y'all see what I'm saying? Um, the, uh, my my close to millennial people, Tanika, Calandria, Col y'all see what I'm saying? Yeah. I completely understand what you're saying. Um, I think that's possible. Um, if each person, with the young people, I think that'll be super, super cool because when this is presented right so it's not just hey it's this certain age group but if they see other young people on the video yeah they're going to gravitate to it yeah. yeah i mean think about it that we can get this type of sophistication to where it looks casual it looks like we catch um uh Calandria's daughter she, she's a perfect age right she's she's walking and reading and 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 then it goes to um, y'all know what I'm saying? And think about if we can catch it and it looks casual when young people, because who are we trying to educate, right? There are some people who are stiff neck beyond retrieval. Not this generation. I mean, we, as much as we want to catch, capture as many in this generation, but it's really for the generation behind us. It's really for the generation behind us. There's some folks who are stiff neck beyond retrieval. It's like, we, if we invest energy trying to go retrieve some folk, it is it it, it would just exhaust us right. and it'd be a waste of time and resources. But if we present these truths to another generation that they're hungry for truths, yeah, they're going to lean into it and say, "Oh," and and they'll adopt it and it become part of their DNA. They right. won't have the same struggle that we have that we've experienced. It'll just it'll it'll be completely different. Right. Because they're not sifting through programming. Exactly. Um, exactly. Most of our battle was with program, how we were programmed. Uh -huh. And they're not sifting through that because right. they're, they're they're already kind of a um, kind of a rebel generation. Yep. Right. Indeed. And we were more of a conforming generation. Yes, we were. They're yes. free thinkers. They really are. They think they think differently. Yes, they do. Yes. Mm -hmm. And and I and I I'll, I'll say this. I think this might be what's missing in terms of getting more uh, millennials and younger uh, and back into the church. Yes, not, sir. Not just people of not just black and brown people, but everybody because every, they're, they're tired of hearing the same old. Not and and not. I'm talking about the same old. Uh, not talking about sin and need to repent from that. That's not what I'm talking about. But but the the church by and large is regurgitating a, a, a information that has been regurgitated from previous generations, and yeah. there's an element of the gospel yeah. that's missing. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! I think this is that missing element. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Not only that. I mean, the argument, because really what what what's what pulls so many into other um, let's just talk about, you know, black people that were the, the black folks that were fed up with how things were going. Yes. Drifted into. Islam yes, they and and or or they drifted into radicalism of some sort, which might have looked like. Black Panther or, or might look like something else, right? Because right. they were told that the Bible was 
a, a, a white man's book. Yep. And and no one and the people that pushed back on that were successfully marginalized. Yes, they were. They were very successfully pushed to the margins. The people that pushed back and said, "No, it's not a white man's book." They were pushed to the margins, and so what? What we are saying is, it is not a white man's book. Ancient Israelites were all black. Yeah, they were all black. It's not a white man's book. Now, the truth, the beautiful part about the gospel is, um. The, the gospel, the redemptive work was for all for men. All people, that's right. Black, white, it's bad, green, purple, polka Come dot. On now. The, the redemptive work was for all men. But the, <laughs> but the beautiful part is that uh, for, for people of color, is that re, reclaim your worth. Yeah. Let me write that down. We want people of color to reclaim their worth, reclaim their worth. And, and by doing so, right, we believe that, that um, it can spark the fire of revival. Pastor, yeah. can I add to that? I think it was maybe the, the first or second week that we got together, we were, we were going through a series of words where we were trying to articulate maybe the why that we see, or how we see ourselves today, how the so-called African-American sees himself today. And I think this is, what, this is what I captured. We consider ourselves an oppressed African people as opposed to a, a dispersed, rebellious uh, Hebrew People. We consider ourselves an oppressed African people as opposed to a rebellious, dispersed Hebrew people who are suffering the consequences of their sin. That's it. That's yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. That's it. We are not an oh. oppressed African people. No. Yeah. We are not. No. Yeah. No. So we've got a, uh, so Lewis, uh, and I know your, your wheels are turning, you'll go to the, the editing process and all that kind of stuff. And I know people have sent forth ideas, but that one idea that I, 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 I brought forth about getting different age groups, even, um, what is her name? Um, uh, I can't remember her name right now. The, uh, mother and daughter always come to church, uh, Hispanic. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, Sister Alma and Sister Alma, uh, Alma and get to get to get um to, to, to we get diversity and uh Pastor Stacy Adon to um to participate as we edit those things. You understand? Um and it needs to be professional, right? So this can't be iPhone type stuff. And so whatever investment and maybe um that we have to make to get quality teleprompter type stuff, right? So there is an app, an app where you can, you can copy and paste that entire uh, text into an app so that it rolls teleprompter, you know? And so maybe that's, yep. no, no, no. I, and so I don't know who to have that conversation with, but uh, maybe, you know, we can have that conversation offline. But anyway, Lewis, great job, man. This was uh, phenomenal. Um, Lord. Yeah, Great. and so excellent job. Yeah, so much. Very good. Phenomenal job, man. So, y'all stay tuned. This is going to be exciting as we package this, and we're going to push this out. And are is this going to be a, a free offering? I'm still battling with that. Certainly, it's going to be free free for our church. But as we offer this to other this set lecture series. I think it's a value. I don't know. Um, what do y'all think about that? Is it a free offering or is it is it a seven part lecture series that we offer for an, a dollar amount and that people? What do y'all think? Pastor, I think as it get prepared and we go over the kinds of procedures we're going to use and the things that's going to be inclusive, then we can decide as we go along 
how whether it should be a dollar amount or what. I think so. That's a lot of, of research and everything that was put into it. So that's a that's lot a of lot. work. <laughs> Yeah. And sometimes dollar amount communicates value to people, right? Exactly. So that's right. Um, just and, a thought. And I guess I'm going to pray about it too. Some of the, right. With some of the um, information that you have that you shared with us, if we make a video or you make the video, and are there copyright issues putting them in the video? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So there's a. Well, you have to look at all of those types of things. Yeah, that's true. That's that very is very true. true. You're talking about certain images and things of that nature. Uh, images and documents, documents that are pulled up and whatever. So if we, if he uses them in the video and then sells them, may need to be careful about copyright infringements and things. Oh, so it, it would be easier to do it. And maybe it's, 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 we, it all remains under the nonprofit sphere and we can simply say, you know, if you've been blessed by this offering, um, you can support this ministry in this way. Right, make a donation or something. A donation, yeah, of a, of a yeah. That's it. That's good. Yeah, we we can work those so, details out as we go. Um, mm. So, all right, all right. Wonderful. Jerry, how's your friend? Uh, still, still waiting to hear. Um, we're, I'm just putting it out on Facebook and a few other uh, close friends <clears throat> that I want to be aware. Okay. Um, I'm sure we'll hear something uh, a little bit later. They call the entire family to the hospital, so that's not generally a good thing. Right. Um, he had been getting better. One of his lungs was improving. The other one was not, and then he his oxygen saturation went. They got him down to like sixty percent. But it was back up to ninety again, and uh, <clears throat> so it's just it's been real dicey for the last couple of days. His son said, and um, um, he's pretty much an icon in Latin American Christian music. He's he's mentored, and many have followed in his footsteps. Thousands and thousands of people. Um, so he's a, it's a big deal. Amen. Oh, what's his name again? Rudy Rodriguez. Rudy Rodriguez. Yeah, Adon actually is a huge fan of his from back in the day when Adon grew up listening to our music. His parents played our music and the music we played back then growing up and they sang those songs in their Hispanic churches growing up. So yeah. um, he's kind of mentored Adon, I guess, in a way too. Adon really looks up to him. So well, we'll remember him and thank our you. prayers. Guys, thank you so much for the opportunity to share this uh, material. Mm -hmm. I am humbled by, uh, by the opportunity. I'm very, very grateful to the Lord for, uh, for making a way to do so. Um, Angela, will you close us in prayer? Oh, okay. <laughs>